we have all candidates covered. Raise your hand if you haven't spoken yet. Come on, Shay, it's you, buddy. All right, coming all the way from, where do you live, Keel? Near Michigan. Near Michigan. Please welcome, from the Assembly District 2, you made a journey today, Shay Sarwal. Thank you. Okay, and, for uh, coming, buddy. I and, and not and not too far actually. I was already out in Kimberly earlier today oh, for some events in Redstone. Yeah, the whole family. This is, yeah, I think this is my fifth event today. So yeah, working hard. But, and I have another one I got to get to yet today. So, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit differently, obviously, than uh, some of my Democrat uh, uh, competition as well as uh, colleagues. But I just I guess I first like to ask y'all a question, which is, do you want me to be real with you? Or do you want me to give you political bullshit? Political bullshit, please. All right, political, political bullshit. No, cut to the All, right. Chase. All right, so let's be real here about what, what we are really looking at in Wisconsin as it relates to maps, as it relates to majorities, as it relates to this issue in general, okay? Um, I like you, Alicia, but uh, under these fair maps they drew, uh, the Republican has about a 30-point advantage. That, that's how the maps that Governor Evers drew. Um, I, I will probably... I will probably win by about two to one in that district. And that's true in a lot of these districts because they concentrated a lot of Republicans into fewer districts. What is the result of that? Result of that is by the numbers that for sure Republicans cannot come back with less than 45. Now that's not a majority. Democrats could conceivably get a majority. But what that also means is there's 45 districts for certain across the state and about 10 to 15 more I think we're gonna win because I've knocked on thousands of doors across the state in all of the swing districts. And uh, quite honestly, I think we're gonna win and come back with a very strong number. So what does that mean though, in reality? It means if you're not actually talking to Republicans too, you're shortchanging yourselves on this issue. Let, let's assume that the Democrats get a majority. It's possible, certainly possible. They'd have to pull, flip both houses. Um, which is even less likely on the Senate side in, in this cycle. They'd have to, because only half the Senate is elected every two years, and so they'd have to do it over a couple of cycles if, if conceivably they can do it. But let's say somehow that happens. Even by their own numbers, they realize that they would come back with a very, very, very slim majority, which means they need to make sure that every single one of their members is in line. And, you know, we, we all, they, I, I've heard several bash about how Robin Voss controls all of the Republicans and makes them vote, calls them in the office, they'll take away committees and blah, 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 blah. Well, you should have seen it when we were trying to pass nonpartisan redistricting Wisconsin and three Democrats from Milwaukee were bullied by the minority leader and two of them actually left the Capitol building because they were, because they were uh, pressured so hard from her office as well as from the governor because they wanted to pass nonpartisan redistricting in Wisconsin. So let's be real here. When you are in leadership, you tend to twist arms. Now, on marijuana related to Robin Voss, yeah, he's not a fan of recreational. I've said I've supported recreational. I've authored a bill on decriminalization. I have co-authored a limited bill on medical, not as good as I would have liked. But literally on the last day of session, I was still whipping votes to see if at least we could pass something on the medical bill. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to the votes because there were some people that thought it was too restrictive, and I tend to agree that it was more a restrictive bill than I would have liked. And so they wouldn't vote for it for that reason. And then there was another group of them that said, because they wanted more free market. And then there was another group of them that said they wouldn't vote for anything no matter what. And so it is a difficult issue to get this across the line. Um, but uh, I, I really do think that we are making progress on this issue. And part of that, I, I said before, you need to be talking to Republicans. Just a couple of years ago, there was an event in my district over in Greenleaf, in uh, they call it the Red Barn out there, where it was myself on one side with a former mayor from Colorado, former Democrat mayor from Colorado. Chris, uh, Chris, Chris yep. Chris, Chris T. Garden, who's also a supporter of mine, uh, on the pro-legalization side, up against uh, the regular Joe. He has a radio show in the area, if you've heard of him. And uh, someone who is from Wisconsin Family Action against the issue, right? And I pointed out to them right from the get-go because, you know, one of the first things that he said, that Joe said, was, why, why, I don't understand why everybody's always talking about uh, uh, taxes to try to raise more money from, from the people. Well, on that issue, I tend to agree with him. I looked at him and said, Joe, I have never once argued for legalization because of taxes. Never once. You know why? Because I'm not looking for more ways to take more of your money. I, I'm not looking for it. 
And on the medical bill that the Democrats crafted a couple years ago, part of why I opposed it was because it taxed sick people. And I said, I don't support that either. But what I turned to him and I said, look, you know, honestly, Joe, your position is not the conservative position. Your position is the progressive liberal position from a hundred years ago that said, government can solve our social ills. That's what it was a hundred years ago. When, when uh, some, one, one of the other folks mentioned that, that uh, alcohol was illegal. That was happening at the same time that mar marijuana was made illegal. And the idea was government can fix society. Well, he, who here thinks that government can fix society and make us all better? In no, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, over and over and over again throughout for the last hundred years of this failed progressive experiment has proven that government can't fix society. Government can punish wrongdoers. It, it can, you know, if you murder somebody, you steal from somebody, we could punish people for doing something that's wrong, but you're not gonna actually change people's mindsets. So I, I pushed back on that, on Joe right away. And, and we, I engaged on this issue. And so that's what I wanna stress with all of you. And I, I won't go into any, any further on this other than to say, if you are living in some of those districts that are Republican, you ought to be talking to the, some of those Republican candidates and talk to them rationally, talk to them reasonably, talk to them, you know, passionately, yes, but respectably. Because most of these people that are in office do want to hear from you. And most of these people if, if, they, if they get calls respectfully from people, I'll tell you, sometimes you get some really nasty, angry calls. And let me ask any one of you, if somebody's screaming and hollering at you and being a real jerk, do you really listen to them or do you turn them off? Do you turn them out on, on any issue? Don't talk to them like they're a human being because they are. We get threats, we get attacks, we get called all these horrible names. And when, and when that happens, I'm sorry, you're a rational human being. You shut off. They don't even send you THC gummy dicks. They send you non-C THC gummy dicks. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know where those came from. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't me. I, I got, I, I got a, I, I got a little gift from somebody. Who told me to eat a bag of dicks, and it was a bag of gummy dicks. It was, it was good stuff. It's still in my office, proudly displayed. Um, but yeah, so, so talk to these people, and you know, when the election is done in about a month. In some of these districts that are some of these swing districts, I mean the Nina district, whichever way, wherever you went to, whichever way it goes, whichever way it goes, it's going to be a tight district. Same thing with some of these other ones. Um, two of them up in Green Bay. Those are those are tight districts. Can go either way. It, talk to them. You know, if if they're a Republican, that's one. Talk to them and tell them why this is important to you. And don't just get angry at them. I realize you're passionate about it and there's a lot of issues to get passionate about. But you gotta talk to these people like they're regular human beings. And um, I, I think we're gonna have something like 20 new representatives in this session in the assembly. Um, I will tell you as a general rule, new people coming into the legislature tend to be more friendly on this issue. I think because, you know, society and, and, and has, has lagged a little bit and so as you kind of replace people even if they haven't even if they're older people but they're new to politics they tend to be more friendly on this issue so reach out to them talk to them and uh yeah i'll continue to work on this issue in madison hopefully hopefully in the majority if i'm in the minor minority we'll see where that goes you'll be one of our votes yeah coming over thank you shay thank you yeah